GM everyone, we're here today joined by a special guest. We have Dean today here and we're going to talk a little bit about the Jupiter Research Center. But before we do, Dean, why don't you give us a quick intro to yourself and who you are? Hey everyone, I'm Dean. I'm a Solana developer. You may have seen some of my open source work. Uh, and amongst many other things, I am a cryptography researcher at Jupiter Research Center. So, uh, Dean, what kind of open source work have you done in the past? Uh, if you go to my GitHub, you'll find roughly 110 open source repos, uh, just with a bunch of Solana smart contracts, tooling, as well as cryptography stuff. So if you're looking for a library or you're looking to get started, it's a really great resource for you to go and just learn how to build stuff. So in addition to being super involved in the open source community, you also worked on this quantum resistant vault called WinterNits. What exactly is WinterNits and like what is a quantum quantum resistant token vault. Yeah, so uh, there was a tweet that was put out there saying that Solana would be the first victim of quantum. And I'm like, huh, really? So 10 days later, I, uh, I shipped the first quantum proof vault on Solana. Um, so what that means is, as quantum computers advance, they're going to be able to crack your private keys. But one thing that quantum computers are not very good at is hashing. So if we use hash based signatures, we can actually protect your funds. And so that's what the WinterNets vault does. Uh, and so it's the first of its kind, uh, a quantum proof solution for storing your funds on Solana. Are you confident right now to say that Solana blockchain would be resistant and is kind of prepared for better quantum technology when it comes to security issues? In my opinion, the Solana blockchain itself is not inherently uh, built in a way that it would be quantum secure. But if you opted into using the quantum proofing technology that I released, you would be very secure. It would have to be behind a PDA. It would have to uh, be safe for the entire like supply chain, right? Like obviously, if you have uh, a token with an up upgrade authority that belongs to a private key and not a PDA, well then, you know, you have a supply chain attack. But at the very base, like root of the problem, this is a solved problem if you choose to opt into using this technology. Dean, we're here today mainly to learn about the Jupiter Research Center. So why don't you give us a good explanation of what the actual research center is? Certainly. So I would say the Jupiter Research Center kind of has uh, a few parts to it. Um, so there is kind of like deep research where we actually try to create cutting edge cryptography research, as well as other things like DeFi research, like how can we make more efficient uh, DeFi protocols or how can we make more efficient proofs or do more things with cryptography, right? And then there's like the applied cryptography, which is where we take this theory and research and we actually turn it into libraries. And these libraries then get used in products such as, you know, JupeNet uh, or uh, ADI or some of the things that you would have seen announced at Katzdambul. So like uh, one really great example of this is actually signature aggregation. So on JupeNet, we don't actually need to use the ED25519 uh, voting, we can use BLS signatures. And that means that rather than it being like one transaction, one vote, we can aggregate a whole bunch of signatures together to free up a bunch of the block space and has the added benefit that we can then verify this on other chains. So there's a lot of things where they start off in this sort of deep research where we go and like look into what is possible and then it turns into something practical like what can we actually integrate into our products to create a better ux and to bring the whole blockchain ecosystem forwards uh, you, you might not know this but like i have a background in aerospace and like one thing that happens when nasa goes and researches something and makes these products is they find out that even though it's made for space it just like surprisingly has these huge benefits for people back on earth right whether it's about doing things in a constrained environment, which helps for sustainability or things like that. Um, when we're doing things with cryptography, it actually often translates to, you know, a 10x, 100x upside for things like security, UX or performance. So it's actually super powerful. It's like having superpowers where you can just like take these existing systems, totally disrupt them and do something really cool and new with it. So could you just tell us a little bit more about JupNet and like why you have so many initiatives around Jupiter Research Center that is open source uh, cryptography, but it will be used in service of JupNet. Is that correct? Yeah. So uh, we're not about like making things and keeping it to ourselves. You know, obviously that's something that's very, very uh, 
you know, I, that I take very seriously, right? Uh, if you look like 90% of my work is open source um, because I hope that whenever I come up with something awesome that other people can use it and break it and make it better. And I think that's a very important part of the entire blockchain ethos that we keep doing that. And Jupiter Research Center actually like supports these initiatives. And the reason why it's being used in JupNet is because there's like a couple of world firsts there. There's a couple of things that haven't actually been tried in blockchain yet. And so it's really exciting to have this new experimental platform that is actually going to have like a whole bunch of users. It's not just some like like sandbox where we just do a couple of tests uh, where we can go and really try these ideas out in the wild and just see how much better we can make things. Dean, it sounds like the research center it's literally at the in the whole end to end process of product development. It's at the very front. Is that correct? Like it's basically one of the first steps. Yeah. Someone someone has an idea. Someone has some problem that needs to be solved, and then the innovation happens in the Jupiter Research Center. Is that fair to say? Yeah. And like for me, this is exactly where I want to be because I want to be making this cool, innovative stuff and then hand it off to like these giga chads who can go and turn it into a really cool product. So, Dean, there's a couple of people online who reference you as their idea of a 100x engineer. And I know that Meow has said some phrases to the effect of that uh, you are a 100x pain in the ass. So just wondering, like, what is Meow 100x of? So you know when you like watch watch one of these like, YouTube videos or whatever, right? And it's got like the playback speed. I think he's 100x playback speed. He's like the <laughs> only guy you cannot listen to on 2x. 